Welcome back guys, today we're going to take a look at 2011 horror film, The Human Centipede 2. The starting scene shows us a recap from the first sequence of The Human Centipede, where Lindsay clenches Jenny's hand and bursts into tears as both of the other persons go limp beside her and the movie ends. Presently, we see an overweight, obese midget staring at the laptop screen as the film concludes. He's a security guard at a car park and suddenly his eyes catch a commotion in the CCTV. A couple argues over the fact that the guy, named Ian, lost his car keys. In the meantime, we see the midget named Martin grabbing a crowbar and walking over to the couple where the guy starts screaming at him. While being utterly silent, Martin shoots a bullet in Ian's foot. The couple starts clamoring and the girl gets shot in the knees as well. They drop to the floor, Martin knocks both of them out with the crowbar and goes around the car park to get his van. After coming around the corner, he tapes the girl and opens the van's back doors where we witness another man is already restrained. The scene shifts back to Martin's office where he puts the movie on reverse and opens a personalized book of the human centipede. As he looks at the bodies, Martin starts to get aroused and runs his fingers along Jenny's figure. In the interim, a suited man shouts in the CCTV camera. The scene now shows us Martin driving away in his van with four constrained people in the back. He arrives at a warehouse where the owner shows him around and hurriedly asks for cash. As the thunder rumbles outside, Martin kills the owner amidst the thunderclaps. Afterwards, he regrets his actions, but nevertheless comes back inside with a bag holding his books and some tools. The maniac approaches the victimized girl and starts ripping off her clothes while her boyfriend howls in anguish and frustration. As he cuts off her undergarments, Martin suddenly gets a voicemail from USA Actors Management, which states that none of the actors and actresses from The Human Centipede are available for auditions in London. Disappointment looms on Martin's face and he takes it out on Ian. Time speeds up to Martin's house where the sound of his abusive dad rings in his ears. In the meantime, his mother arrives and scolds him before stating that Dr. Sebring is waiting for him. Martin wakes up groggily, takes out his book, and stares lustfully at Jenny's picture. Suddenly, his mother barges in and Martin starts to dress himself. Downstairs, we see a man with a hefty beard waiting for him, but Martin walks straight to his pet centipede and feeds it with an eerie smile, while Dr. Sebring asks to sit beside him. As he sinks on the couch, her mother complains at his talk about the centipede and the 12 people in it. Dr. Sebring states that the centipede has a very painful bite and related to the pain inflicted to Martin as a child through sexual abuse. Martin's mother watches him in disgrace and blames him for his father's imprisonment. Later, as they eat dinner, the music upstairs cracks up Martin's mother and she takes a stick and bangs it on the ceiling. In no time, the ruffian neighbor barges in and the old lady blames Martin for the act. The hoodlum takes out all his anger on him and continues to smack him. Afterward, we see Martin back at his job watching Dr. Heiter's medical instructions for making the human centipede. He scribbles down all the notes and draws illustrations of the mouth and anus. In the meantime, he notices a couple in the parking lot so he grabs his gun and walks outside. As they're leaving in the car, Martin emerges from behind a pillar and shoots them. The man drops out while Martin consoles their kid and we see his pregnant wife crawling away. Martin bears no mercy and knocks her out with the crowbar as well. Back in his box, the midget gets aroused by the movie and starts wanking off with the sandpaper. In the interim, two drunk girls walk over and one of them spots Martin jerking off and they both start laughing. On the other hand, Martin ends his gruesome pleasure trip and the scene shifts to both the girls tied up in the warehouse. The camera shows us Martin checking all the naked, helpless people sprawled out on the floor. With the pregnant woman in the lead, eight people in total are now held captive in the warehouse. Everyone whimpers in fright as they lay on the cold floor. Martin shuffs off the light and uses a torch to absorb his specimens. Suddenly, he gets another voicemail from a talent company stating that Miss Yinny is excited and agreeable for the auditions for the Toronto film. As the call ends, Martin leaves and one of the victims whimpers in helplessness that the human centipede is just a film. Groaning and bleeding, he confides that the lunatic is going to stitch them up, which causes a wave of fright to run through everyone. Back at Martin's home, he comes across his mother holding a knife. Ignoring her, he climbs into bed while a suicidal mother slits her own wrists. Afterwards, she discovers Martin's book, and in her rage, she rips it apart and leaves. Martin cries helplessly and walks downstairs and hugs his pet centipede's cage. Just then, his mother arrives and he forces her face into the glass jar where the centipede attacks her. She wails in agony while Martin comes from behind and smashes her head into a discarded mess. Afterwards, he puts her carcass on the dining chair and bangs the ceiling. The neighbor barges in as usual and loses his mind upon seeing the woman's split open face. Suddenly, Martin shoots his leg from behind, knocks him down, and ties him up. After that, he takes a ton of working tools and knives, piles them up in a suitcase, and leaves for his job. At his booth, the lunatic cheers as he watches the suffering depicted in the movie. Suddenly, he spots some activity in the parking lot and the camera shows Dr. Sabring and another man pleasuring themselves with a hooker. Martin walks up to them and his expression reveals utter discomfort, dismay, and anger. He shoots the driver and the hooker tries to escape but Martin shoots her in the legs as well. 
Back to the car, Dr. Sabring walks out, puts up his pants, and talks to him while Martin barely controls his overwhelming emotions. But the flurry takes him and he shoots Dr. Sabring in his groin. As he drops down howling in pain, Martin puts an end to him by finally shooting him in the head. He grits his teeth in fury and proceeds to confront the hooker, who sprays his eyes with the irritant, but nevertheless, Martin overcomes her as well. In pure anguish, he goes back to his office and packs up his things and receives a message that Miss Yenny is on her way to Heathrow Airport, London. Martin nods in affirmation, and the scene shifts to his van where the people are constrained in the back while Miss Yenny sits in the front seat, excitedly talking about her eagerness for the audition. Martin doesn't say a word and drives to the warehouse in storming rain. Upon arriving, Yenny enters the warehouse and horror chills her spine as she hears the wails of the powerless victims. In a single flash, Martin knocks her out while the rest of the people squeal. He gradually cuts off her dress and unclothes her. Afterwards, he feeds his pet centipede and moves the victims who are laid out in a line. As they all shriek in terror, Martin takes out his tools and lines up all the knives and pliers on the floor. With that done, he opens his book and starts observing the notes. Meanwhile, all the sufferers squirm away from each other and disperse, but Martin goes around the space, knocking everyone out like a madman. Moments later, he proceeds to his thuggish neighbor and smashes out his teeth with a hammer. The guy starts choking on his own blood and teeth while Martin jeers. Afterwards, he advances towards the pregnant lady and finds her completely unconscious. Tears of anxiety rolls down his face as he drags her aside and covers her up with a sheet. As he finishes with her, the freak moves towards Yenny, turns her over, and marks two spots below her knees. He then takes a blade and cuts her skin, which makes Yenny wake up in extreme pain. The monster fiddles through the underlayer, takes out a nerve, and cuts it with a knife. That erupts excruciating pain, and Yenny's body starts to shake violently. Martin proceeds to another man to repeat the same process as he goes under a violent shock as well. That doesn't stop there. The midget advances towards another person and marks some lines on his hips. He then cuts them open like a beast until the flesh inside bursts out. Unable to bear the pain, the victim gives up on life, and that hits Martin hard as his experiment can now be seen as a failure. Shrieking in disappointment, Martin impulsively starts to staple the victims together. He lines their mouth with the buttocks and staples the lips to the anus. The victims start whining in misery and affliction as the crackpot continues his torment. After finishing his bestiality, the psychopath dances around in frightening cheerfulness and makes the human centipede walk around him. As the victims groan and cry in other pain and misery, Martin the Freak starts laughing aloud. Afterwards, he puts a bowl in front of Yinny, who's the leading centipede, and drops some filthy canned food for her. She throws away the bowl in ferocity, and Martin then proceeds to forcibly feed her via funnel and tube. He forcibly thrusts the plastic pipe down her throat till it reaches her stomach. Afterwards, the monster pours a whitish liquid down the funnel until Yenny gags on it. Once finishing the torment, Martin receives a call from USA Actors Management again, stating that the actors will be willing to audition for the Taranto's film. But before Martin can answer, Yenny and the others start screaming at the top of their lungs. That freaks Martin out and he menacingly proceeds to chunk out Yenny's tongue with a plier. All the ongoing torment still doesn't satisfy Martin as he tries to make them excrete into each other's mouth. Nobody acts on it, which provokes an evil idea in Martin's head, and the devil proceeds to inject laxatives in everyone's butts. In a few moments, the laxative starts its work, and the victims start to fart. Amusement dances out of Martin's face as the people's stomachs start to gurgle, and finally, one of them bursts out. Martin enjoys the menacing sight until everyone execrates into the filth into each other's faces. Eventually, the stink gets so intense that even Martin throws up. But his satanic fantasy is now fulfilled, he moves to become the monster he always feared. The wrench walks to the end of the group where a girl is all on fours. In the most freakish way, he wraps the barbed iron wire around his organ and starts r the girl with it. The poor soul shrieks in excruciating agony as the midget proceeds with his barbarity. As Martin ends his devilish procession, the pregnant woman suddenly wakes up and runs outside, shrieking in fright. She shambles out of the warehouse, sits in the car, and tries to start it. Suddenly, Martin appears trying to break in, but the doors are locked, and he's unsuccessful. In the next moment, the woman goes into labor and delivers her baby with drops on the floor. Just then, the car grabs the power, and in the most disturbing way, the woman presses on the pedal, causing her infant's skull to be squelched. Nevertheless, she manages to drive away, leaving Martin standing there in extreme agitation. Back inside, the human centipede managed to break into two as Martin's neighbor rips off his lips from the butt and walks away. Martin barges in the warehouse and finds them crawling to the sides. In pure anguish, he starts killing each one of them by shooting. As one half dies away, his gun also goes empty. But that doesn't stop him, and the freak proceeds to slit their throats one by one. After killing everyone, he advances towards Yenny, but doesn't kill her. Something stops Martin as he proceeds to caress her face, but Yenny hits him hard in the balls. As he falls down in agony, she takes off his underwear, thrusts the funnel in his butthole, grabs the centipede crawling on the floor. Cautiously, she drops the insect in the funnel until it crawls deep inside and does its work. Martin senses the pain and starts shrieking madly. 
Despite the excruciating pain, he manages to get up and stab Yinny in the back. As she bleeds out, Martin staggers away while pressing his belly in misery, and everything fades out. The last scenes of the movie pop up and we see the ending labels of the Human Centipede film. We then see the midget back in his office, aroused by it once again, and with that, the screen fades out. Drop a comment below letting me know how you found the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thanks for watching, guys.